but uh, A opposite HK, so 2, um, uh, negative 4, negative 5, the base is 3, right? This is your little base, this is A, you go opposite H, follow K, right? Okay, the vertical asymptote is always your H, so it's X um, equal negative 4. So then if we put that on the, oops, I wasn't looking. If we get that on the graph, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, this is your vertical asymptote. So that means your graph is either going to be to the right or to the left. Now, um, one of these sides is an error, right? And so... Um, that's why I tell you guys, pick negative 10, like if I plug a negative 10, and I'm assuming this is positive 10, if I type that into the, we'll get to the table right now, if I type that in to log 3, and say I type in negative 10, wait, can you see, oh, sorry, you can't see, wait, 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 okay, um, uh, plus 4, negative 5, I get error. Okay, so I plugged in negative 10. So if I substitute negative 10, I get error. I don't know why the lightning is so messed up. Okay, error, right? So that means over here is my error, and that's because my vertical asymptote is at negative 4, right? Which is, that's what I have here, right? Okay, so then if I plug in positive 10, right? I get negative 0.2. Okay, so if I substitute positive 10, I get negative 0.2. So positive 10, negative 0.2. If this is negative 1, 0.2 would be like just barely like right here. Okay, so at least I have a point already. It's like right there. Um, and so that's why I tell you guys, pick negative 10, positive 10, see where your error, error is. And so that's how I know my graph is going to be, if it's there, then that means it's going to be going somewhere like this, okay? Um, okay, so we'll get domain and range, we'll do that afterwards, we'll do the y-intercept afterwards. So then let's just go ahead and jump to the table. Um, I'm trying to figure out why it shines it out. Okay. Um, so if you're at negative 4, I'll pick negative 3.5, right? So if I substitute negative 3.5, I get negative 6, 6.3. Okay, so negative 3.5 would be 1, 2, 3, 4, sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 6.3 would be like right there. Okay. Um, let's plug in, we can plug in negative 3. And I get negative 5. So negative 3 is negative 5. So this is negative 3, this is negative 6, negative 5. Here and so I'll go. Let's try negative one. Let's see what negative one does. If not, well, let's just do negative two. Negative two is negative three point seven. Negative two is negative three point seven. Two, three, three point seven. Here. Okay. So then let's throw in negative one. We'll throw in zero, and maybe we'll plug in three. Okay. So let's just get our numbers. Oops. So negative 1, I get negative 3. So negative 1, 1, 2, negative 3 is here. So see how it's starting to curve? Remember, I have to meet up here. So technically, you already know it's, yeah, OK. I have to look up at the camera. I'm by myself in here after school. On a Thursday, so I'm trying to, no one's talking to me, telling me it's not correct. Okay, so zero, negative 2.47, and by the way, that's right here, right? Negative 2.47, oh, so then we'll do four, since that's what it's asking for. 
This is obviously error. Okay, so then let's put in four. One point two. So one, two, three, four is negative one point two. And so it's up to you if you guys want to kind of extend it out. It's kind of doing this. Okay. It wanted the y-intercept, right? So the y-intercept is around negative 2.47. We have that right there. So when they ask for the y-intercept, it's also when x is equal to zero, which we have here and we have here and we see it on our graph. So it's negative 2.47, right? Okay, x-intercept, you can't really see it, but if I would have done it maybe a little bit, uh, negative 10 something 11 right it'll be around negative 10 to negative 11 somewhere around there uh, so that's good enough because it doesn't fit on the graph if you would have gone two four six eight we would have seen it um oh four four is negative 1.2 uh what are we missing okay domain and range your domain is your x-axis, I can put any number into the calculator, right, that is not negative four and to the right, more positive. So it's non-inclusive. So it's a parenthesis, negative four to positive infinity. Your range is your y-axis. So if I look here, the y-axis, this is going down negative. This is slowly rising for the y positive values. So this is all reals, or you can go negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, and behavior you didn't have to do. So as x approaches positive infinity, y is moving to positive infinity. As x is moving to negative infinity, whoops, you can't see. As x is moving to negative infinity, the function is actually dropping lower to negative infinity, negative y value. All right, the square root function, here's your a, h, k, right? Okay, so it's two, right? Opposite h again, negative five, negative seven. So negative five, negative seven is that starting point, right? So I'm gonna plug that in the first slot, if that's okay. One, two, three, four, five, negative five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, negative seven. Plot that. And that's my starting point. There is no asymptote here. So it's either going to shoot off here or here or down here or down below. The A is positive, so it's going to go this way. All right. Um, oh, orientation is positive because the A value is positive. This 2 is positive, so that's positive. We'll get to all of this later. Same here. So let's just get to our table. To our table. Okay, you can try if you want to plug in again negative 10 and positive 10, right? So if I substitute negative 10, two square root, oops, negative 10 plus 5 out, click out, minus 7, I get error. Okay, so if I substitute negative 10, I get the error. So here is my error, right? You can't have imaginary negative values. That's what it's asking for. Um, no lie right now, I just tur turned back. <laughs> I expected to see your head, so you're not there. Okay, so these are the values. You're going this direction. Okay. Um, oh, so here we go. Error, negative 10. There you go. All right. Um, so now negative 5, let's substitute negative 6. Let's see what that's doing. Oh, I'm in negative four. Oh my goodness, you guys. Negative four. Um, and I get negative five. So negative four, negative five. The lights just went out. This is negative four. One, two, three, four, five. There's my point. Let's go negative. Let's go negative two. If I substitute a negative two, yeah, it went. Hold on, let me get up. Let me. I just have to walk around and wave my arms around. There you go. Okay. So you 
get that, but hit SD, and I get, for negative 2, I get negative 3.5. So, negative 1, 2, 3, negative 3, negative 3.5 on here. And then I know they want 0 because that's part of here, so let's get the 0 in, which is, by the way, our y-intercept, right? So if I substitute 0... negative 2.5, right? So negative 2.5, which is also here, negative 2.5. And then if I substitute the point, it's like here. So obviously your graph is doing something through this way. Okay, it asks for four, so why not just plug in the four? 9, that's 3, 6, negative 1. Yeah, negative 1. So here's negative 1. And so 1, 2, 3, 4. Here's negative 1. And so there we go. Okay, it wants the x-intercept. So let's just substitute a 10 and see what happens. Oh, you guys, I went a little crazy. Never mind. Let's just type the whole thing in. I was looking at what I say 10 plus 5 minus 7. Okay. 0 0.7. Also, it might be somewhere around 10. Let's go back. Let's see 9. Let's see 8. All right, it's like seven something. Okay, so four, five, six, seven, here's eight. You're crossing somewhere around here. So we're getting close, you guys. Yeah, like 7.5. All right, we'll just go 7.5. Okay, so the x-intercept is 7.5. It's somewhere around there is your x-intercept. Okay, so there's your graphs. Fair. Oh, domain and range, my bad. Okay, domain and range, this is inclusive on negative 5. So it is a bracket negative 5 to positive infinity. What is the range? The range, all positive y values, because it's increasing, but because it does stop, it stops at negative seven inclusively. So it is negative seven to positive infinity. And then as far as end behavior, we don't see the graph though. As x moves to positive infinity, y is going to positive infinity. As x is moving to negative infinity, y is stopping at, oops, sorry, sorry. As x is moving to negative infinity and it gets more and more and more negative, the function is stopping at negative 7. Okay. So, um, yeah. Okay. Oh, by the way, this, where I had some students uh, solve this. So, look, let me actually put this in. I've done it before for you guys, too. Negative 10 plus 5 minus 7 to negative 5 minus 7. This is rad 5. Remember that negative 1 is your imaginary number, minus 7. Okay, what's 2 rad, um, what's 2 rad 5? Let's get that. 2 rad 5 is actually 4.5. Okay, so this is really 4.5. 5i minus 7, but it's written in a plus b or minus bi form. Negative 7 is your real number. This is your imaginary number. So this is what it means by getting it into a complex number. So you would substitute the negative 10. You get up a negative value um, inside a negative radicand. So you can't get that. So now you're dealing with imaginary numbers. The two is in front, so that's where the two, the two just came down, which is the a value. 
um, that negative one makes by removing the negative one because hold on, this is the recall you have to have um, the square root of negative one is I imaginary so that negative it is hold on, this negative is what becomes the I and so then it follows you Okay, stop the video. Let's do the other side.